think that leads us to our preview of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Sam, I want to ask you, I know your younger brother is a huge Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Um, How excited is he about this team? And I kind of just want to get your opinion on them this season because they're a team that's never great on paper, but they seem to sort of just back their way into the playoffs. But this season, it seems a little different. It seems like something special is there in this team. Yeah, I mean, the Steelers have constantly been they never they're not really ever a bad team per se you know mike tomlin has never had a losing record you know that's the stat that always goes around every year and that's part of the reason why he's been around so long apart from um you know he does have super bowls under his belt but he was you know he had ben roethlisberger and like you know that that was uh what was carrying him not that it was carrying him but mike tomlin is a good coach but it's like they're always just a little bit mediocre and they always kind of like make the playoffs or, or just miss the playoffs. And it, it, it's just constant. So they're never giving him the boot because it's like, how do you boot a, a coach that has a winning record? And I think recently there, there's been a huge shift on all sides of the ball um, for the Steelers. Obviously, their quarterback is the main thing here really rided with Justin Fields through the entire beginning of this season, which I was really surprised that um, they put Russell in to begin with. I really thought that this was was Justin Fields' job, but my brother told me that he was happy to see Russell Wilson in there. He was happy to see, you know, this guy, uh, you know, a Super Bowl winning quarterback uh, under center again. And, and it, he's like, wow, it's like exciting to see the football being played and on – the offensive side on the defensive side, you know, it's not just TJ Watt. We have uh, that kid Beanie Bishop just kind of like popped out of nowhere for the Steelers defense. And it's like, they're just really amazing. Dante uh, Jackson, um, Deshaun Elliott, like they are, they, this is a very, very solid defense despite having some young guys. And yeah, my brother's pretty stoked about it. He's um, happy to see his team winning. It's obvious. It's pretty obvious that, you know, they're most likely making the playoffs this year, if not taking the division or, you know, going hard up against the Ravens as hard as they can. Um, so, yeah, it's they, they're definitely playing a lot better than I was anticipating them to. Five and two um, at home, just torch the Jets back to back weeks with 30 plus points. Um, Ross looked good, a 109 rating last week, only sacked one time, two touchdown passes. Najee Harris, back-to-back 100-yard rushing games, scored. George Pickens, who we'll talk with um, Gab in a little bit, our guest tonight. Excited to have Gab Goody up in uh, just a few moments. And uh, Tudo, we love you. We appreciate your comments. I just want to acknowledge that. Um, Yeah, look, I know you guys aren't here to disagree with us all the time. Um, look, we appreciate your opinions. Even if you don't agree, we still want the comments. We want you guys to show, tell us why you disagree with us. It it definitely opens for a good discussion. Um, but to finish the point, Sam, George Pickens, a hundred yards last week on the Jets defense, Uh, Yikes! big yikes. (laughs) Like literally that's like the one, that's the biggest, weakest part of that team. Like, they don't ha- really have any receivers, per se. I mean, you know, Pat, Pat Fryermuth is in there. You know, George Pickens is somebody who's very outspoken and is – I'm not taking his talent away from him because we have seen him play incredibly, incredibly well. But, like, if you're going to be the wide receiver one on this team, psh, you got to do a lot better than that, buddy. You know, a lot, lot better. Adam, what's good, guys? Let's go, Giants. Appreciate it. And then Sam, LOL, my teammates are missing the blonde (laughs) Sam. My hair is blonde. It's just when I put it in the braids, it's darker. But it's still blonde. Don't worry. (laughs) This is my natural color coming in up here. Um, And then other than that, look, six and a half points. It feels like it's a lot of points, but... The way the Giants have played, I think it's a fair line. It's a very fair line. If the Giants would have won last week, played a little better, I think you wouldn't see a touchdown line for the Steelers. Um, you know, it's not every 
year they play them. So, um, and then they're asking Jones today too, Sam, the discrepancy between home and away. For some <laughs> reason, like MetLife is cursed. Are we bringing up that stat? Oh. That 600 plus day stat? What is it? I didn't even read it because I didn't want to read it. I think it's been 658 days since Daniel Jones has thrown a touchdown at MetLife Stadium. Something like that. Since prior to even signing him, like giving him the contract. That's terrible. It's a lot of days. No. <laughs> Sorry, Adam. No, I'm not, I'm not trading him Malik Davis. I'm not doing it. Um, But yeah, it's not good like that is not the statistic that you want to hear that from your 40 million dollar quarterback like no touchdowns not not a single touchdown at home like that's when you should be throwing the touchdowns mm -hmm. yeah i'll be at the next home game by the way um oh boy our guest is here um very excited to welcome her on the stream uh Sam, friend of yours, uh, FanDuel's own, if she's ready. Um, Gab Goody, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Thank you for joining us. How are you? Hello. Great. How are you guys? Yo, hanging doing in there. Good, doing good. <laughs> Me too. You welcome. know, it's been it's been a week, but I'm still going. Yeah. For you, too. <laughs> you, you've been struggling as a Browns fan as well. I mean, is it is it ever, like, going to be good for the Browns? No, but will I still watch? Yeah, because you can't look away. Yeah, it's like it's like a car crash. Uh huh. Every yeah, every time. <laughs> Love that. We can relate bad football teams. Um, I know we missed you for the week three show, so we're very happy to get you up here. Another AFC North opponent, but I guess before we get into that, Cab, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, the work that you do for FanDuel? We're very elated about that and interested to know a little bit more about Gab Goody. Yeah, so I work for FanDuel. I've been working for them a little over three years. I'm a content creator for them. I make TikToks. I make short form videos on YouTube, a bunch of stuff on Instagram, yap on Twitter. Uh, I go to events, interview some athletes, interview some fans, and I just really love to talk about sports. That's basically, that's basically it. And I live in Cleveland, Ohio, and I'm a Cleveland sports fan, unfortunately. I'm sorry. I'm a Yankee fan. I'm happy for you. Like, at least you get to have some happiness. We had some, you know, like we didn't think we were going to make it this far. So at least we had that. Very fair. Very fair. I'm in the same boat as a Mets, Giants Mets yeah. fan, which is not Great. common. Sorry, guys. Yeah, we, like, see, we had our fun. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Eventually, we might be able to have more fun. I don't know. We'll just have to see. <laughs> we will definitely see. Um. Sam, why don't you get started here? Um, you know, we'll run through some stuff, talk about the Steelers. I know, Gab, you see them twice a year as a Browns fan. So, yeah, I think yeah. something that we were talking about before, Gab, was um, the Russell Wilson, Justin Fields situation. And yeah. like, we, I kind of was like iffy about it. I thought they were going to be rolling with Justin Fields. What were your thoughts kind of as Russell Wilson was named the starter? I understand the thought process behind it because like Justin Fields, you were winning games, but you also don't know what you're getting out of Russell Wilson and you were winning games, but I don't think it was really the offense that was winning those games. Not to discredit what he was doing, but I just thought they could do more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I, I just like, I was so surprised. I really thought that Mike Tomlin was going to be like, nope, Justin Fields is the guy. And he said it so many times. And then it was just like, oh, actually, no, Russell Wilson's coming in. And yeah, did amazing last week. He like, did. He did he a great He came job. out and was just like, hang on, hold my beer. Here I am, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Do you think it has anything to do with the pick that they are going to get, too? Because, like, isn't it so many snaps Russell Wilson plays and they get a higher pick or something like that? Isn't it what it's supposed uh... to be? Possibly. It's a very good. I actually don't know the, the, all the details of the Russell Wilson trade. Tom, do you know? I do not know. Um, I thought it's all. Oh, it's possible. It? They it's might a, get a better pick if they, if they play him. Yeah, I think it's a comp pick that could possibly move up around um, for, who would it be, Denver? So mm -hmm. I don't know exactly how it works with him. But, I mean, he's played well the last couple of weeks, I guess 
I don't think Justin was playing bad, but um, thank you, Tudo, for that comment again. Um, with Russ, he's developed a good connection, it seems to be, with George Pickens, right? And he's been really good. Young player out of Georgia, one of the league leaders in receiving yards and big play catches. Uh, where would you rank him, Gab? Would you say he's top 25 range, top 20? Where exactly would you rank him? And I guess, Sam, we were talking about it too. Do you think he's a wide receiver one? Uh, I mean, George Pickens is good. But we also don't know how good he can be because he hasn't had someone to give him the football like other great wide receivers do. So I don't know where I would put him on a list like that until I see what he can do with like, I mean, not like Russell Wilson's anything crazy either, but it might help him a little bit. Yeah. I, I, I keep going back and forth about George Pickens also because he's on my fantasy team. And like, sometimes he's just like, here, have like 22 points. And I'm like, oh, cool. And then sometimes he's like three points. And I'm like, great. Perfect. Love this for me. Um, so it's like kind of like, I know fantasy points isn't a stat, but that's always kind of what I base it off of. Um, but yeah, George Pickens is weird. It's like, if he was on the Chiefs, would he just be like a freaking star? I, right. I, I don't know. Sam, why don't we talk about fantasy for a moment there? Uh, no. You absolutely whipped my butt <laughs> last week. Um, I did. <laughs> mm. I don't have the points in front of me, but it was it was pretty solid. It was like, I think at least... 50 or 60 points? I it, think. it was 65. I had the spell of Tyreek Hill, <laughs> Devontae Smith, Sam Laporta, and Tang Dell all combining for like 12 points, if that. <laughs> it's terrible. Rough. So rough. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're good. Um, but yeah, no, I, I agree. I think Pickens is on the way. I want to see him get more separation on these routes, though. And right now, Pittsburgh, it's not like they have anybody else because Roman Wilson is out with um, an injury, and he was a high-round pick for them. So I'm very ecstatic about George Pickens, not this week, but overall I think he's a really good big body receiver, somebody that can get separation off good corners, and um, he'll give opponents fits for sure. I think that something else that we were talking about earlier in the show was Mike Tomlin and kind of like how he was and is a good coach, but kind of a mediocre coach. Gab, do you think Mike Tomlin has it in him to at some point, I don't think it's going to be this year, but at some point bring this team to a Super Bowl again? Or do you think he's kind of like washed up? I don't think he's washed up. I don't think the team is good enough to do it. Mm. I mm. like Mike Tomlin. But the only time, like when I watch Mike Tomlin, he just runs my team up and down the field and makes them look pathetic every time we play against them. So to me, Mike Tomlin is like here. I think he's great. If he were to be the coach of the Cleveland Browns, I'd be like, yeah, come on, come do it in a heartbeat. That'd be awesome. Um, Super Bowl, mm, probably not. I mean, TJ Watt hasn't even won a playoff game in his career. We don't talk about that enough. You're so right. I did not even think about that. That's but I like Mike Tomlin. <laughs> I love him. I think he should be a great coach. Coach of the year candidate, at least top five, top three. Five and two Steelers team with a quarterback mm -hmm. shuffle going on there for sure. For sure. Um, yeah. So I think with Mike Tomlin being the coach that he is, I mean, following the footsteps of Bill Cower, Chuck Knoll, you know, Bill yeah. Cower emphasized defense. Pittsburgh's defense has always been good for the most part. Having Watt, High Smith, but on the other side, the Giants have a player by the name of Dexter Lawrence the second. Gab, what's the game plan if you're Pittsburgh? How do you slow him down, if any? Because you saw it week three. Oh, that I, I saw a disaster week <laughs> three, mind you. Um, how do you slow him down? I, I, I mean, it's going to take a lot. We know that, but. We also have Mike Tomlin on the other side. Who knows what he's going to actually do, though? Yeah, definitely. Very fair, too. I mean, you have Zach Frazier, James Daniels, Mason McCormick, those guys. And, I mean, Dexter, nine sacks on the season for a DT. That's certainly a lot. But right. and it I hasn't mean, mattered. <laughs> Russell Wilson's not some young guy that's going to be out here running around either. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I feel like that's another conversation that the Steelers need to have. It's like Russell Wilson can't be your quarterback of the future because he's already in his mid thirties. He's not going to be around for another 10 years. There's no way. So it's like, do you run him with Russ, but yet Justin Fields is your backup and was winning you games, but is, is Justin Fields the future of the Steelers or like, it's like so right. kind of all over the place. And they're not even in like a, they're winning games. They're not in a place where they could go and get a, like a bridge quarterback right now. You're winning games. You got to keep winning. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, I think going to like giant side of things, it's very obvious that one of the best players on our team is Malik neighbors. And like mm -hmm. when he's healthy, doing an amazing amazing job on the field do you think that there's anything that the Steelers defense can do to like guarantee that Malik neighbors like just they shut him down well you know the Steelers defense is always their strength right and they completely shut him down no they're not going to completely shut him down but it'll be a great matchup I still think that he's going to go off like he always does we're clearly going to see some entertainment from him but like it might be one of the more difficult matchups he's had so far this season yeah but, I mean, the Browns' corners are really good, and he was uh, completely destroying them, so there's some hope. Yeah. It's very, very possible that T.J. Watt reaches Michael Strahan's sack record on Monday night. Oh, that's all I'm saying. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Seven times Daniel Jones was sacked last week. Seven. Great. Seven. I think that. Watt is getting Jermaine and then Highsmith because Watt – Gabby, you might know better. Does, does Watt travel much? Does he jump across sides of the line? He usually stays on one side. Yeah. So he would get the right tackle. So, Sam, that works. Well, Highsmith, if Watt wasn't on the Steelers, Highsmith would be so much more talked about. His sack numbers would be even better. than they, I know I know he only has one, but he gets to the quarterback. He He's a problem. And Josh Zudu is a bigger problem <laughs> for us yeah. <laughs> taking a lot of time to decide on what to do um but yeah i guess let's um get into our keys of the game so we'll do this uh talking about how pittsburgh could win how the giants could somehow win and then we'll get into uh our part little parlay party sam and i put one together gab put one together excited to go through that so gab is the guest we'll start with you what does Pittsburgh do really well that the Giants should be worried about? Obviously, we've struggled to stop the run. So, getting I'm concerned to the quarterback and causing turnovers. Yeah, that's what they'll do. Mm -hmm. They're scary. They're not. They're not some weak, easy team. They've never not been scary. So, when you play the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know it's always going to be a competitive game, no matter how they are each year, they find a way to win. I feel like their defensive strengths are our offensive vulnerabilities. <laughs> so that's yeah. like, it's literally just sacking the quarterback and turning the ball over. Daniel Jones knows exactly we'll how to do that. In. Yeah, oh my goodness. It's rough. You want to hear this stat? So Do I? You do. Okay. I think all of us do. Per next-gen stats, the Giants defense – has allowed a league high 5.3 yards per carry this year across oh. 55 designed runs on the inside between the tackles. 17 of those runs went for eight or more yards. So 17 of those 55. Dexter Lawrence was absent for eight of those 17 runs of eight or more yards. Another three of those runs with Lawrence on the field, the Giants had five or fewer defenders in the box. I know it's a lot of numbers jab or whatever but on designed runs outside the tackles the giants are eighth best in the nfl so for me it's can you stack the box and make Najee harris run outside towards broderick jones and dan moore right because harris is a bull he'll run right through the teeth mm -hmm. of defense and even though dexter lawrence is there he's the only guy there you're not getting production from anywhere else you know mm -hmm. rakeem nunez roach is the guy but He's getting old. He's not quick enough anymore to compete with those younger offensive linemen in the trenches. Yeah. I definitely think that our our key to the game is to just, like, make sure the Steelers don't score points. 
Like that's just that is the bottom line for the Giants. The defense needs to obviously the offense needs to step up, but I think the defense is much more capable of stepping up and just holding back their points because what what they scored 37 points last week. Like we can't we cannot compete with that. The Giants don't go past like 25 points. It's just not in our nature. Um, so it's like as long as we can kind of keep them in the lower end of the spectrum, then maybe there's a chance. But uh, other than that, I think that's the main key to the game for us. For sure. Um, and what we'll do now is two players to watch from each team. Um, we could duplicate if we want, because I don't know if there's more than six players to watch on the Giants, if we're being realistic. But Gab, we'll start with you here. Um who on the Giants? Maybe one on each side of the ball for each team. So we'll do Giants across the horn first, and then I was about to say the Browns. And then the <laughs> you don't want to watch anyone on there. No, yeah. don't do that to yourself. Yeah. Um, obviously, for the Giants, I'm going to go Malik Neighbors. That is number one. I feel like that's everybody's favorite, right? Sure. And then for the Steelers, we're going to go, obviously, with Russell Wilson because this game is going to depend on him. If he wants to be a good quarterback – It'll be a good game. If he doesn't want to be a good quarterback, it could get really messy everywhere. Totally. We got oh. Sam. Oh, gosh. For the Giants, I'm I'm gonna stick with Dexter Lawrence as somebody to watch. Like I said, kind of going with my key to the game. Like the defense has got to be the strongest part of our team this week. And Dexter Lawrence is one of the best defensive players on our team, so I'm going to say him. And then I'm going to say Najee Harris on the other side of the ball just because of the fact that I feel like he's kind of having this resurgence this year a little bit. Like, Najee didn't do a lot the last, like, season or two, and he's kind of reemerging again. And with the way that our run defense is, like, he can just, like, absolutely explode and take off down the field. So I'm going to, I'm going to say those two guys. For the Giants, <laughs> um, Brian Burns for me, he he's a guy that, I mean, we all watched Hard Knocks, right? Uh, Gab, I don't know if you watched Hard, but we watched Hard Knocks and we saw how that trade went down. It's been a great acquisition um, for the Giants. Four sacks, six TFLs, six passes defended too. He's a guy that can not only line up off the edge, but can drop back into coverage and play a bit of linebacker. And I think when you have a versatile tight end like Pat Fryermuth, uh, you want guys like that, right? You know, Bobby O, Sam, and Mike McFadden, serviceable linebackers who have played well, but the limitations of other areas of this defense have hurt their production this year. So it's I think it's up to guys like Burns, not having Thibodeau again, Burns and Dexter Lawrence too step up and sort of um, pick up the pieces there. And then on the offense, I'm going to go with John Michael Schmitz because mm. Cam Hayward is a bull. Like he's an actual bull, and he's very, very good. Three sacks for him on the season. And another thing, too, about Cam Hayward, uh, great run stuffer. The Steelers are holding running backs to three and a half yards per carry, third lowest in the NFL. And – he also clears up double teams, clears up lanes for a young rookie named Peyton Wilson, who is one of their leading tacklers with Patrick Queen. So those are my two for the Giants. Now for the Steelers, Gab, who do you have? Um, I'm sorry. No, we did the Steelers. I did the Giants like an idiot. Uh, let me. All right. So I guess we'll go counterclockwise. I'll do the Steelers and then. So for Pittsburgh, I'm going Alex Highsmith. I talked about him before. Good edge rusher. Will be matched up against Josh Azudu. Big factor. Offensively, I'm a tight end guy. I like Pat Fryermuth. Went to Penn State. Good yeah. pass catcher. Um, two touchdowns on the season. But most importantly, being more involved with Russell Wilson under center. Two catches, but for 51 yards last week. So – Enough of me. Let's get to our parlay party. Woohoo! Gab, we'll start with you here. Um, 
I know the props aren't open yet. They are it. now. Don't worry. I looked they right before. Now. They're up okay. now. And what I was pressing was a little spicy. I didn't know it was going to be that. I didn't know it was going to be like that. I thought I was being like normal. No. I was bumping up the odds. Oh, crap. Yeah. So that's a little funny. Um, you want me, I can, you want me to just go? Fire yeah, let's, yeah, let's okay. hear it. What so I'm taking got? Russell Wilson to throw two touchdown passes over one and a half TD. The TD's thrown. I know that sounds a little crazy. But if he can be the Russell Wilson that we know, he can do that. George Pickens, anytime touchdown scorer. And Russell Wilson, 225 passing yards. I thought that was going to be like under what it was going to be. No, we're reaching over with that. That's some plus money on there. So that got me up to like 620, plus 620 on that. I said, oh, okay, interesting. I thought I was shooting low there. Nice. It's pretty good. Going big on Russ. Let Russ cook. I guess. Right? I guess so. <laughs> He's putting a chef hat on yeah. this Monday for sure. All right. So for us, Sam, you wanna you want me to roll through it or yeah, you you do it. Okay. So <laughs> Steelers have a good defense. If the Giants have anything good about their team, it is their defense. But I'm taking the over in this game because Pittsburgh has been scoring a lot of points over the last couple of weeks, and I don't see how the Giants are going to stop them. So um, I bought a couple here over 36 and a half is um, where I'm going with that. I like Malik Neighbors to get 60 plus receiving yards. I like Najee Harris to run for at least 70 receiving yards. George Pickens, 60 plus receiving yards. And then the final leg, TJ Watt over half a sack. That is insane that that's so low. Mm -hmm. Like if I, like I might just do TJ Watt over half a sack just like by itself. If you take it solo and just throw whatever on it, it'll it should hit. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Like that's like, yeah, crazy. Hundred um, percent. But yeah, I mean, other than that, um, let's get into our game predictions. So Gab, we'll start with you. Is there any way the Giants pull off this upset? And even if you don't think they do, where could it possibly go wrong for the Steelers or the Giants? It could go very wrong for the Steelers if Russell Wilson decides to be the quarterback that he's been over the last couple of years. He didn't decide to be that last week, but it all depends on him. And I don't think that they will pull the plug on him in this game. Why would they do that? That'd be dumb to do. Um, it, it's It's all on him, I feel. Do you have a score prediction? Oh, score prediction? Oh, man. Oh. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe like, mm, like 21 to like 13. Steelers? Pretty good. Yeah, that's a good one. I think Just we're going to. Coming up that under there. I think, we might <laughs> get, I think we're going to sweep on this Giants show right now. That means hit the, that means hammer the Giants if we're going to sweep. Usually <laughs> yeah, that's how it goes the other way. We always, oh. if we ever pick against the Giants, the Giants win. That's oh, great. Like, every time. But I I, I, re I really don't think that the, the Giants are going to be able to pull this out. We also know how much Daniel Jones struggles in prime time, like all the time. He's like a poor man's Kirk Cousins. Um, but, yeah, Pittsburgh, and I'm going to say that they're going to easily cover their six-and-a-half uh, point spread. I'm going to say 27 to 10. I don't think I think the Giants maybe get one touchdown and a field goal, maybe 27 13 ish, but I, I can't imagine it's gonna be more than that. Zach Hoffman says, trade me Bijan. Zach, I'm not gonna talk on our behalf, but I think you know what the answer is gonna be, buddy. Um, Why is everyone trying to propose fantasy trades in the comments right now with me? Um, like, come on. I'm not <laughs> this is the second time he's asked me if I could trade a Bijan. So for me here, I'm going to go Pittsburgh 26 to 13. Chris Boswell has been one of the best fantasy football kickers this season. I think the Steelers score two touchdowns and kick four field goals to win to win the game. That's six scoring <laughs> that's six scoring possessions. So that's 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 a lot. Aye, aye, aye. That's a lot. Clean sweep for clean sweep Pittsburgh and um, yeah, that's pretty much. It Gab, I really miss Dalvin Tomlinson. I I, I wish he was still a giant. I you hope know, he's you might as well just take spots. him because our team is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Why 
not. I mean, there, I think it's going to be a fire sale really quick, mm. really soon. Like yeah. We're getting in dangerous territory of the whole team exploding. It's going to be bad. It's like with the AFC North, there's the Ravens, the Steelers. The Bengals are sort of like teetering. Like, yeah, they, they had that one moment, but then they're now they're like kind of where they used to be. Right. And then there's the Browns, which, and there's you the know. Browns. And the, all those teams are going to be on hard knocks next month. Oh, it's going to be – there. you know what? Good thing that um, Deshaun Watson isn't playing anymore because that would have been even worse. Like those episodes would have been bad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I still think they will be. <laughs> but, like, I, that would have been a whole other level of something. Yeah. Yeah. What up, goofballs? Appreciate you. And then – um. The good news for the Steelers is some guys are practicing this week. Roman Wilson still might not play yet. I really want to see him play, even if it's at the Giants' expense. I want to see him be well, um, do well in the NFL. And then for the Giants, we have three corners that did not practice today. So that goes to show you where we're at. Um, Love that for us. And I would trade Jalen Hyatt at this point with those cracked ribs. I I don't want him. Who's Jalen Hyatt? I'm not familiar with him. Third I'm not going to do anything this year. Third round. And I don't even think he's a bust either. I just think we don't know how to use him. Like, I'm actually convinced. Yeah, probably. You're probably 100% correct. But, um, it's a massage situation. Glad that he, he is out. Um, probably, you know, might probably be better off with Jameis Winston. Definitely better off with Jameis probably. Winston at this point. Um, but, yeah, Gab – want to thank you very much yeah, for, for sure. joining us and taking the time out of your schedule to talk some football with us. And um, hopefully we can talk about your Browns when Ooh. they're better off <laughs> at some point. Um, but yeah, we do have a question for you actually that just popped in. Do you think this is the last year that the Giants have Daniel Jones? For your guys' sake, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how people feel about Daniel Jones. I'm just going to assume, like, I feel like he's a great guy. I feel like he's a very nice guy. But I don't think he's a very good quarterback. We, we've we been Daniel Jones truthers for a long time. And this year we finally were like, it's got to end. It's got to end, yeah. unfortunately. I feel like it, the, the the potential was there. We had the, the thought that it could happen. And then it's just still not happening. Nope. Unfortunately. Yep. Um, time to move on. Love him for what he was, but not many quarterbacks should say they won a playoff game on the road and played well. But at the yeah, end I was of the there. Day, I was there. Really? You were there? I was there. Yep, in Minnesota. I was there. Amazing. And what what a what a time to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> he oh. looked good that game too. Yeah, I know the Vikings game. defense is not good. Wasn't good in twenty two, but still thirteen win team. Yeah. Throw in a closet. I agree here with Goofball saying Hyatt is a project, not a bust. I agree. Definitely bust potential. Uh, that's probably Drew. What's up, Drew? Hope you and Rob are doing well. Gab, thank you so much again for your time. Yeah, for sure. Plug yourself, please, one more time for the folks watching where people can find you and your work. All my socials are the same across every single thing. G-A-B-B-G-O-U-D-Y. You can find me on that everywhere. TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you want to find me. That's me. I'll be there. I will, I will be complaining about the Browns if you guys don't mind. <laughs> that's where I'll be. Amazing. Thank cool. you so much, Gab. Yeah. We appreciate Thanks, you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Have a good one. You Take care. I am going to have to rewatch that players to watch segment because my mind absolutely like dropped during that segment. So forgive me, Sam. That's why I got so confused. I was like sitting there and I'm like, wait, what am I supposed to be answering right now? <laughs> We've all been there, had one of those moments. It's a Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. Yeah, We're all, like, a I'm bit. cooked. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Um, but yeah, no, good show. Um, Throwing the parlays in there, I think that was fun. Definitely getting a different look at it, seeing what neutral fans think of this game too. Um, getting Haran to talk about the Steelers, the division rival, definitely some good stuff. And you know, the comments were great tonight. Appreciate you all tuning in, everybody. Um, no more fantasy trades in the uh, in the comments, guys. Yeah, please. <laughs> 
because I don't fantasy trade like ever. So <laughs> sorry. But yeah, it'll be an interesting week. Hopefully everybody plays well, even if it comes in a loss. I'm excited. I'm going to the Giants game next week when they're back at home against the Washington Commanders week nine so that should be a good you one always go to commanders games i feel like i always i went last year too when they won but yeah i feel like, you, like you're always going to a giants commanders game is there any reason or like no um uh sorry the fiance's dog just uh <laughs> woke we up we didn't even get to congratulate but, you on the show tom thank you <laughs> congratulations everybody tom got engaged yay and there goes my face turns bleep red yeah, um, yeah. we're um, so excited for you though thank you thank you crazy story but um what are we talking about <laughs> <laughs> we were uh talking about oh the commander's games off. <laughs> yeah Qu quickly though why i go to giants commander's games oh, there's yeah. no there there's no reason my brother wants to go to the same game that his friend goes to and all the other games like around this time of year before it gets too cold are prime time home games. And my brother who wakes up at like three, four o'clock in the morning, every morning doesn't want to sit there through a four o'clock, eight o'clock game. This is the one of few one o'clock home games that we've had that we've been home for. So just happens to be the commanders once again, winnable game, regardless of who, I mean, I get it. They're much better this year. They're a first place team, but when the Giants play the, play the Commanders, it's always a winnable game. Yeah, especially if Jaden Daniels doesn't play. Now we need to hear how and see the ring. Thanks, Drew. Appreciate you, buddy. Um, but, yeah, no, definitely some awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, before I have any more uh, dumb moments on the show, let's <laughs> sign off, Sam. Um, folks, if you're watching, make sure to check us out on all of our social media platforms on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Big Blue Avenue. We appreciate all of your support. On behalf of Sam Cardona Norberg, I'm Tom Scavetta saying good night. Without further ado, let's go Big Blue.